Welcome to the lesson on the fundamental counting principle. So you should have just seen uh, the lesson on tree diagrams. So we're actually going to go back to the lesson on tree diagrams. And that first example where you were taking the train from Toronto to Washington uh, via New York. And we we uh, listed all the pot we said there was two ways to get from Toronto to New York, bus or train or plane or bus, sorry, and then three ways to get from New York to Washington, bus, plane, plane, bus, or train, and in total there was six ways. Now, some people might have noticed the connection, right, that, okay, I, I probably didn't need to do this drawing. Could I have just said, okay, there's two ways here, three ways, two ways to do my first action, three ways to do my second action. Could I just go two times three equals six, that was my answer, six methods. Could I just have done that? And the answer is yes. That is essentially what you're doing. If you think back to what multiplication means, remember it's two groups of three? And that's exactly what we have. We have a group of three right here, and a group of three right here. And there's two of them, right? So for each each sort of, each of your first actions, your group, and each of your second actions where you get the three from. And then we could have done that for our second example too. Remember you were tossing the coin uh, four times and for each coin, co coin toss how many possibilities you had? There was two, 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 and two. So two outcomes for each action, heads or tails. Um, and then how many total possible outcomes? Sixteen. Well that's just two times two times two times two and sort of for the same reasoning why that works. And that right there is our fundamental counting principle. So let's just formally kind of define it. So we'll say if if a first action, if because remember the order matters, if a first action can be performed in, let's say, n ways, so n is a variable, and a second action can be performed in m ways, so m is a variable, then the two actions can be performed together in order. Formed in the in that order, in n times m, many ways, and that's just kind of writing down what we explained or what we noticed from those tree diagrams. So here's another example that we could do, and we're gonna see you'll see that you wouldn't want to use a tree diagram for this. Um, we're going to have to go straight to the fundamental counting principle. Um, so suppose you own uh, two different colored shirts, five different colored pants, and actually let's forget this part right now. So ignore this. So Ten different shirts, five different pants, and that's all you own. You have ten shirts, five pants. Um, how many different outfits could you create? So, question is how many? You know, what are the actions here? Um, action one would be choosing a shirt. And action two would be. choosing pants. So by the fundamental counting principle we just need to know how many ways we could do each of these. So we could do this ten ways and we can do this five ways. So there's your M and there's your N from the definition right here. Right? Oh sorry. There's your N and there's your M. So 
n is how many ways we can do the first one, m is how many ways we can do the second one. So it's as simple as just saying uh, 10 times 5 equals 50. Therefore, there are 50 different outfits. Um, now I'm going to add a part B, and that part B is the, the part I crossed out. Let's say there's also, you have to come add your shoes to this outfit. So there are two different pairs of shoes. Okay, so all this is really going to do is add a third action. Action three, um, choosing shoes. Now we just have to make a, a small comment about our fundamental counting principle. So notice the way I wrote it, I just had first action, second action, there was no third action. But you can obviously extend it to three, four, five actions, right? If there's a third action, uh, performed in, let's say, P ways, then what are you going to do with this number P? You're just going to multiply it to this. So it would be N times M times, times P now. And then for every action you add, you're just multiplying another number. So there's two ways to do this. So action one, there was, so action one, there was ten ways, times action two, there was five ways, times action three, there's two ways. So ten times five, fifty times two, therefore there's a hundred different uh, outfit combinations. So that's, that's quite a big number, right? And you can th think about, imagine doing a tree diagram with a hundred different branches. We definitely don't want to do that. Even 50 is too much. Um, so, you know, this is kind of a limited amount of clothing, right? Ten, ten shirts, five pants, two clothes, that's all they've got. But just with that, we, we've been able to create a hundred different outfits. Okay, so now we're, let's do a part C. And part C, we're going to add a restriction. So add some restrictions. We'll just add one restriction, just to start it off. And those restrictions are, we're going to eliminate some of these 100 possibilities. So let's say um, one of your shirts is red. No. Yeah, let's say you never want to wear, you never want to wear, your red shirt with your oh what's a I don't know what color pant I don't know your your brown pants because you think for I don't know why but maybe you think they they don't go together so your your red shirt and your brown pants can't be worn together so the outfit where you wear your red shirt and brown, brown pants no longer counts. We have to eliminate that possibility. Okay, so remember you had 10 shirts and obviously one of them is red. Um, you had five pants and obviously one of those is brown and you have two shoes. So there's two ways to answer this question. Method one will be here. Um, we're going to call this the uh, using cases. So you can use cases. So let's, in this case, we're going to have two cases. Case one and case two. Case one will be the case where you do not wear your, or you, let's say where you do red, wear your red shirt. Red shirt. And then case two will be no red shirt. 
So those are the only two possibilities, right? You either have to wear your red shirt or you ha or you don't wear your red shirt. You can't do both, you can't do neither. So let's say I'm wearing my red shirt. Well then, in action one, choosing a shirt, how many ways could I choose my shirt if I'm wearing the red shirt? Well, there, there's only one shirt I'm wearing. I'm wearing the red shirt, right? Even though I have nine other shirts, I'm saying in this case, I'm wearing my red shirt times action two, how many pairs of pants can I wear? Well, if I'm wearing my red shirt, I can only wear four types of pants. Why? Because I can't wear the brown pants. So there's only four pants I'm allowed to wear. And then shoes, there's no restriction on shoes, so I can wear any of my two shoes. So there's eight outfits which include this red shirt. So if I wear the red shirt, there's only eight outfits I can, I can wear. So therefore, eight outfits with red shirt. And if I don't wear my red shirt, that's case two, then, oh, sorry, it's action three. So case two, action one, how many, way, how many ways could I pick out a shirt? Well, I'm not wearing my red shirt, so there's nine other shirts I could wear. So I can do that nine ways. Action two. I have five pairs of pants, and there's no restrictions now because I'm not wearing my red shirt, so I'm allowed to wear any of my five pairs of pants, including the brown ones. Times action three, no restrictions on the shoes. So I have nine times five times two, that's 90. So therefore, there are 90 outfits without red shirt. And now I just have to add these two together. So therefore, there are 98 outfits um, where I don't wear my red and brown, my red shirt with my brown pants. There are 98 outfits. So just that one restriction, red shirt, brown pants, look how many that eliminated. That eliminated, well, two. So that one restriction eliminated the two possibilities. So that's one w way to do this question. Um, now we're going to look at the third, or the second way to do that, this question. And this will be the, me the method we'll call the indirect method. So remember, um, in example C, we found out there was a hundred outfits with no restrictions. So if there's no restrictions on what can go together, there's a hundred. Now we want to look at the restriction where red shirt and red shirt and blue pants can't happen. So what we're going to do is look at the opposite. How many ways could you wear your red shirt and blue pants? So again, action one. How many ways could you do action one if you have to wear a red shirt? One way. How many ways can you do action two if you have to wear blue pants? One way. Because it's the blue pants. How many ways could you do action three? Two ways, because there's two pairs of shoes. You could wear either of them. So there's two ways this exception could happen, that you could wear your red shirt and blue pants. So what we're going to do to figure out how many ways this could not happen, so this is how many ways that this could happen. Outfits with, with red shirt, blue pants, or brown pants. Sorry, I've been saying blue the whole time. So therefore, there are 100 minus 2, which is 98 outfits with out red shirt, blue pants. So all I have to do is subtract from 